Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen. We are at the West End Diner in downtown Marion with owner Annette Perry. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. So exciting. So we're in the kitchen, a uh, beautiful kitchen, uh, but we are going to actually make a very, very delicious dish, which we will reveal in just a moment. Um, thank you again for having me. Where should we start? Um, well, let's talk about the soup. Okay. So it is called an Italian wedding soup, and we've prepared a lot of stuff ahead of time, except for the meatballs, because I think the meatballs are such an important part of the soup. They are. Yes. They okay. are. They are a uh, secret family recipe, which now you know about <laughs> a secret family recipe, but they're my Nana's uh, classic meatballs, and we just make them really small. They're going to be bite-sized in, in the soup. Yes. So they are the, the authentic um, meatballs from Tuscany. So yes. Very good. Yeah. So. And when we sort of put these together, it was similar to a recipe that I have as well. Okay. Except I never use, I don't know if this is your secret, but veal. Tell me about oh. that. Well, it's just a, a uh, more tender meat. Oh. And it adds, it, I don't know if you would really notice the difference if you did a side by side um, but it just adds a little bit of a softness to to the meatball and with the variety so we're using three meats and you yes. just gave away one <laughs> no more no more no more oh uh, no it's fine um, it, it gives a little more depth of flavor and so the meatballs are they are very rich and flavorful and just full of, uh, of different flavor profiles okay. so and I know these are teeny tiny little yeah, meatballs. Yeah. So show me how big, like the size of a marble. Should we make a few? Yeah, let's make a few. Okay, so we have this here. Let's show you guys. We are, we have the balls made up. So uh, we have all the ingredients in there. And we're gonna take my my marble's bigger, smaller than yours. No, you know that's a perfect size. Okay. I'm taking some of mine off because okay, let's go back here. Um, you think bite size, right? Yeah. You you want this to fit. Um, actually, I think mine's a little too big. You um, you want this to fit on someone's spoon, right? Yes. And not have to cut it or not have to bite it. Okay. So. What we're going to do with these is a little bit of flour, and then I'm kind of trying to catch with these, yeah, and tossing them. So you're getting it totally coated. Oh, you have but, no flour. Yeah, but then you're getting rid of all the excess, so it really is a light dusting, and you can still um, see the, the meat, the pink of the meat. Okay, so you're not, you don't want it coated like you'd be frying it. Okay. Right? So we're coating it because. So we're coating it because, and then let's move this over and we can put these on the tray. Um, we're going to cook these in our stock pot as the base of the soup. And this is going to help the meatballs stay together. Because ah. since you're not just, and I, actually I do this when I just make meatballs also. Um, because it's often, you know, maybe put over an arugula salad with like a lemon vinaigrette, which I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's still with something else, and I like them to not fall apart. So, um, especially with a soup like this, where you're going to saute them in your stock pot and then add it to the soup, you want to make sure that they stay together, right? Once you get this incorporated into your soup broth, you don't want the meatballs to fall apart. Okay. So this Italian wedding soup, so uh, a little background on how I met you. Um, you just came in to the diner yeah. with a mutual friend of ours. Right, right. And uh, to my delight, found out that you were doing some wonderful things at the Marion Library and that you were Italian and look at you, you look like Sophia Loren. And <laughs> You're so, so beautiful. <laughs> And tell me more. And and then I divulged <laughs> my secret insecurity about soup. That my mother made great soup, but I've always been intimidated by soup, especially the Italian wedding soup. That Why is, is that? Because it had, it seems to have so many things in it, and it seems to be so magical. And maybe because of all the ingredients and the special broth, that I just thought, wow, here she is. Can she come to the kitchen? Uh, we make. 
three soups of this. You're getting bigger now. I'm getting bigger as I'm talking. See, I can't. Um, we make three wonderful soups at the diner, but and they get ordered over and over again, and we often try new soups, and they go back to the old soups. But I think it's really important to introduce people to the variety of soups that are out there, particularly this time. Although we sell as much soup in the summertime. Oh, here really? Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Okay. All year long. I mean, I love soup. I'll have I love soup anytime. Yeah, and a lot of people do. Do you sell cold soups in the summer, like a gazpacho? No, this is Marion. Well, fun to make. This is Marion. Let's Iowa. do that this summer. Yes. Although that's Spanish, but or borscht. Oh, borscht. okay. Okay. Also, well, I lived in Spain okay. in undergraduate, <gasps> and so I have a real deal gazpacho recipe too. That'd be okay. fun. It's All right. Delicious. That's, that would but be cold. Nice. That's a cold soup. Yeah. Okay, so t let's talk about the yeah, West End Diner. Oh, for you to the time. Again, my balls are getting so big. <laughs> so, I am going to have to uh, take a little off. See. That's okay. Um, it's a work in process. So, soup is one of our passions here, and we try to make everything authentic and real and fresh. But soups are a mainstay of the diner, okay. and um, we opened in 2019 on a day that my mom, on the very day my mom passed away, and oh my she gosh. was the inspiration for all of the fresh food because I grew up in a household where we had a garden and everything was fresh, and, awesome. and that's one of the things I, I love about this soup is all of the vegetables in here. Yeah. So you now I know the broth had carrots and various mm -hmm. yep, things, yep. and then we add some beautiful green vegetables. So I, I, how did, were these ingredients selected for Italian wedding soup? Now I know this is your grandmother's recipe, right. you know? Yeah, so, you know, I think it, a lot of it is regional. You know, when you think about um, olive oil, there's a million brands of olive oil, but they come from different regions. A lot of them come from the Tuscany region, but actually a lot of them come from Sicily. Um, so I think this recipe, so we're from around Florence, which is in the Tuscany region, kind of north of Rome. And north of Rome. She's from <laughs> north of Rome. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, what they use. They use what's on the land. You know, you talk about... Um, natural ingredients that is the base of Italian cooking and you know I think to your point it's intimidating yes I want to make it less intimidating right because it, it is all natural ingredients you know when you're over there they don't have processed anything most restaurants and um, a lot of the folks we stayed in the villa um, the last time we were there last summer and she this gal has um, what was it like 15 apartments and we rented the whole place because we did a family reunion so she's cooking you know meals for 15 apartments times you know two to four people in each apartment she doesn't have a freezer she doesn't have a freezer and that's the thing is it's using the ingredients in the region it's using the ingredients from the earth it's you know you're obviously using meat um in some dishes but a lot of it is um vegetarian fresh 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 herbs fresh vegetables fresh fruit lots of lemons right i mean it's just that's what makes it amazing so when i you know when i knew we were going to make italian wedding yeah. soup i i you know i'm i'm a marketing gal in my heart so i always do the research okay and i was stunned to learn that, that italian nothing to do with weddings it is really the marriage of the vegetables and the meat where it got its name, Italian wedding soup. And it's often called a peasant soup because, again, as you say, the peasants would go out to the garden. Right. They would throw in the pot right. and it became the meal. Yeah. And that's the, the, the provenance of this soup, apparently. Yeah, and that's why you would get probably a... a not a dozen, many, many dozen different varieties yes. of this recipe because yes. it's based on what's in their backyard. Yes. Um, you know, arugula, do you have spinach? You know, what what vegetables are you throwing in there? Are you putting meat in? I mean, it, 
my grandma always put meat in, but I would imagine some people didn't for one reason or another because it wasn't available or they couldn't afford it or they chose not to, you know? And this soup would probably be a beautiful vegetarian soup mm -hmm. with just without the meatballs. Sure. And yeah. just vegetables. It has so much flavor. You know, you think about the broth that we made yeah. and or that we're going to, to remake here in a little bit. Um, and the, the base of the soup itself with all of the fresh vegetables and fresh herbs. You know, it's it, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. So you, you almost don't need the meat. Um, but I love the meat. <laughs> Although a good meatball <laughs> is fantastic. A good meatball is pretty yeah, darn amazing. Always good. Yeah. Always good. So, so we're gonna just keep rolling these while yeah. we're while we're talking. And, so. and if you could take a camera shot of my side of the pan, <laughs> you will see that my balls are Fairly. various sizes. There is no, absolutely no uniformity <laughs> to this. Yours are gorgeous and beautiful, it. all the same size, and then I have the little dinky ones and then the big ones. <laughs> And practice, practice, practice. practice. But yep. it's important. One thing when we make these in the stock pot, we brown them so right. that the, right. the good flavor in the pot. Right. And then also, they don't have to be cooked all the way through because they will cook in the broth. What we're going to do in the stock pot is brown them to kind of seal them and start the cooking, and then we'll set them aside to rest. Then they'll go back in later. Okay. Yeah. That's one yep. um, You know, I, I, I want to laugh a little bit at your meatball size and shape, but you know what? It, this is so funny because when I make... This is um, why I'm intimidated <laughs> by the soup. I can't even oh, roll it out. When I make um, homemade pizza, and we talked about that too, about doing yeah. so, some yeah. pizza, but my pizza crust is, I think, of course, the best on the planet. Probably. But when I, when I roll it out, it either looks like um, a heart or it looks like the shape of Australia. It never turns out in a perfect circle. So we have a wood fire pizza maker yeah. here from Italy. So we, in the summertime, make pizzas. And right. you're right. Um, and we so call them hard. artisan because yeah. it really means <laughs> no two are the same. Right. That, right. Is, yep. that is what artisan is. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And I think everybody kind of expects that. They would be disappointed if it was a perfect round, Little Caesars, you know. That's title. true. Yeah, that's true. Okay. They're unique, for sure. Okay, so tell me more about the West End Diner. You opened in 2019. Yes, in October of 2019. You have just a beautiful, adorable little restaurant. Thank you. But you also, I, am, I just love this. You also have seating outside, a beautiful patio, and then you've got that huge gazebo. And then you have all these stores. So if you if you don't know where this is, it's literally one block off of Marion Square um, on Sixth Avenue. On Sixth Avenue. You can't miss it if you look for the house that's a restaurant with seating in the patio, seating in the middle, and then these shops. The shops. So tell yeah. me about tell me more about that. So um, we bought the historic house first, and okay. she's one of eleven sisters that remain. And Marion, all built in 1860s. Oh, wow. And it was in gorgeous shape and owned by families for 153 years. Wow. Okay. And my husband, Jack, and I, um, you know, he indulged me in this little passion project of creating a destination. Okay. So we have three children, grown daughters, and six grandchildren, and they all moved away. Oh. And we said, why did you move away? <laughs> and they said, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. If there's an event in Marion, we stand in line for four hours, we do the thing, and that's it. So I said, well, I am going to single-handedly change this. We're going to start with buying this historic property, and then the rest of the house is on the block, and I'm food, shop locally, have an outdoor space to have events. Okay. Oh, wow. Then COVID hit. Yeah. The dreaded region yeah. COVID hit. Yeah. And everything sort of stalled for a good year and a half. Yeah. And sort of unfolded as time went by. And we now have uh, seven shops out here with uh, beautiful uh, local shopkeepers. Uh, they're all women at this point. And Try, one of my, let me interrupt you for one second. When you do that, yeah. now roll it. No, 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 before the flower. Roll, roll in a circle. Okay. 
much. So it gets into your little ball. Now flour. Okay. Are you saying I have flat bottoms? Go on. <laughs> this is what you're saying. They'll be fine, and they're, they're going to taste amazing. They're not. They got flat <laughs> bottoms. <laughs> See, look. They did one. That was beautiful. <laughs> Forty-three balls <laughs> later, I get one. That's perfect. Uh, okay. So back to the shop. Yes. Uh, so one of my passions was to help dreams come true for very, very small businesses um, in Mary. So we we built very affordable little shops that could keep the January, February, March when nobody was out shopping. Uh, okay. And then they could be open summertime then through Christmas retail. Oh, okay. And they will come and go. You know, everybody has an idea and it either works or it doesn't work. Oh, and then we get and another, then they kind of turn yeah, over. Okay. And then they turn over. Okay. Now, opened with me in uh, 2020. Okay. had a couple that have turned over. And next spring, which is okay. very exciting. I have a wonderful list of people who, you know, think they've got the next. They're on your waiting list. Yes, they're on my waiting for list. To be a shop. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And for me, it's always sad. Well, two things are sad. So, two of my shops got so popular that they moved on to larger spaces and high rent districts. So, which is good for good so for them, good. but not good for you. And it was yeah. amazing to actually have been part of their success. Right. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. amazing. But even though it was sad to see them go. Yeah. But then t more people come in, and some. You know, decide that festivals and little markets is exactly where they should belong. Okay. Uh, one, one gentleman, my only guy, uh, Raul, and he has got now a wonderful Mexican restaurant in Animosa called Porfirio's, okay. and he was a shoe doctor, and he had a passion about clean tennis shoes, and thought he would start a business where he would clean tennis shoes. Oh. Had a tremendous following, even even after he closed his shop and went on to uh, open a restaurant. In with bags of tennis shoes to be cleaned. I mean, because oh, he has such a interesting. Positive. Right. How curious. And it's, that's the type of thing is that okay. these ideas are so amazing and so unique. And for me, it's just thrilling to be part of that. Yeah. And even the restaurant here, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a professional marketing person. I raised money. I did all kinds of things. And then I end up run, running a restaurant, which I've never done before. <laughs> Well, it's phenomenal. The Thank food you. here is phenomenal. Okay. I've had, you guys have ridiculous breakfast scrambles. So if you haven't tried those, yes. try that. Um, the salads, the sandwiches, I, I've tried all of it. It's all delicious. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm Thank super, you. super excited. So this Italian wedding soup, uh, you're going to be featuring this yes. week in the restaurant. Yes, tomorrow. Well, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but so on Tuesday the 7th, we'll start it. Okay. Yes. Yep. And, and we're going to try to get yep. this posted. Then. Yep. yep. And then we'll see if it's, you know, hopefully we can make a couple more batches. Okay. And maybe then, you know, make something else. More stuff. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I would love that. Awesome. Yes. So, again. So, what kind of shops do you have now out there? Um, we have. So you can, we can crowd these as long as they're oh, not touching, because it's not like a cookie where they're going to expand. That's true. So we'll take them off of here. Right. Yep. So uh, Marcy's Jewelry, uh, she has the most amazing thing. She's a, um, she's a, um, she's got a forge where she uses heirloom jewelry okay. and makes jewelry out of them. Necklaces, earrings, oh, cool. all kinds okay. of things. It's fantastic. So many people will bring grandma's old oh. silver and then have her make gifts for the entire family out of oh, this. Oh, wow. Her, That's cool. Oh, she's amazing. Um, and she's extraordinarily successful. She does a lot of markets. Shop. She was one of our very first shops oh. and is tremendously successful and one of my very favorite people. And then we have in shop number uh, two, we have got a brand new shop, and he, this is a gentleman okay. who is a very successful photographer, wedding photographer, okay. and always wanted to okay. 
started out with some very high-end sustainable men's clothing and moved on to Legos. Of all things, <laughs> what? his Lego line took off. And he, on any given Saturday... What do, you mean, what do you mean his Lego line? He has vintage Legos. Oh. So Legos are huge. Oh, Legos line. are... Yeah, yeah they're huge. Okay. But huge. Like, he's, so he has vintage ones that he's, he's got, selling. Re, he's got where he finds yeah. the most coveted boxes oh. of Legos, you okay, can imagine. Sells them for huge prices. Got but it. then he also has these wonderful Lego build events where all the 6 through 10-year-olds in town come and he piles on these Legos and for five dollars oh, wow. they can get a pound of Legos and they spend two hours making a mad wonderful face. And, and is a, it a competition? No, it's oh, just a family it's just affair. The thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do a competition here in the winter time when it gets cold. So we'll have a Lego competition here for okay. grown-ups as well as kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of grown-ups that would yes. do that too. So he is a great example of going in with a, a dream wow. and ending up. You have to follow the money. Right. Where Legos, you just I mean you just can't beat the popularity of them. Right. And so that is the core of his business. Okay. And then in shop number three, we have um, a wonderful woman out of Iowa City who makes the most phenomenal bags out of Scottish plaid, out of 100% cotton. Nice. Beautiful things. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the name of her shop is Downstairs Designs. Okay. And she is on the corner. The Swamp Bar an yep. original store with us. Yep. They Been expanded, there. yep. They went from a small shop to a double wide, oh, nice. if you will. Okay. And they are hugely successful. A little locally owned bookstore. And then we have... Um, There's a clothing store, too. Yes. Yeah. So then we have a woman who's an artist. Actually, she did recyclable swimming suits when she started. This was her passion. I know. I know. That's odd. And then moved into <laughs> all kinds of clothing, and she's also an artist. Okay. And she features art somewhat based on stretch marks, if you will, um, honoring the birth of your children and the, the changes your body goes through, and then she puts these into art. It's just... Oh, wow. Phenomenal. Yeah. How unique. Very unique. Wow. But she's also got a tremendous line of gifts and clothing that okay. she has. Again, she's morphed from swimsuits made out of plastic bottles to now this homeware line ah, and okay. candles, which is terrific. Oh, wow. And then on the end, we've got Frankie Peas, which is a store that um, is a sister store to Purple Wagon, which is a baby store. And they were original with me and then grew huge and then moved. Oh, okay. I was in yeah. that one years yes. ago and I, yeah, I was trying to remember. Cause, and then you also had a while back that was um, one of these first few that was metal and they were making rings out of spoons. That's, that's Marcy. Oh, yes. oh, 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 yes. oh, okay. yes. oh, okay. Yes, yes, Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the antique. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Yes. Yeah, that was super cool. She, she also had oh, these so. beautiful boxes. Oh, my gosh. She's got wooden boxes oh. that her dad makes. Yeah, I so, got one of those, too. One of the amazing things, and as I counsel people say, I want to open a store, I want to be in business, is you need a village. You truly do. Yeah. And all of our shops have tremendous support from spouses, family. Yeah. You just have to. And if it's it not, family, you don't do it alone. No, you, you don't, don't do, do any of this alone. No. Yeah, even for me, um, so... Fun fact, my so the, our company is called Gia's Italian Kitchen, but my name is Kelly. I introduced myself to you again, but if you don't know who I am, I'm Kelly, owner of Gina's Italian, Gia's Italian Kitchen. Gia is my daughter. Um, so Kelly's Italian Kitchen doesn't sound very cool. <laughs> so so I, I borrowed her name. She's named after my great grandfather, Giovanni. Oh. And I need and then so I her, I named her Gio for we named, named her Giovanna, um, which I just love. And so that's how Gia's Italian Kitchen There's a perfect one um, again. got named. I got two now. They're looking good. <laughs> they're looking good. Oh, we got a lot of meatballs here. We do. You know, this takes a while when you're doing the soup meatballs because we're making them so small. It doesn't and I normally honestly, take this long to roll. Are they too big? Any? They are. They're yeah, I mean, it's fine. They're fine. Okay, they're fine. 
because we want, we have a very nice big quantity of meatballs and that's really um, what you want because you want everyone to get several meatballs in each of their bowls of soup, okay. right? So, and once these go back into the soup, they're going to continue to flavor the broth, mm -hmm. right? When they, when they finish cooking in the broth. So, um, Mine are having a lot of these is going to be awesome. So, you know, I said uh, my background is not restaurant planning, and I yeah. just it happened upon it. Your background is not Italian. I mean, way back in mm -hmm. Italian cooking. Mm -hmm. But then in the middle, we have this beautiful finance career. Yeah, yeah. What's that all about? Yes. So, yeah. So, I, my mom's 100% Italian, and uh, I grew up in the kitchen. So, that's definitely my passion. But, you know, going to college and, you know, doing the whole... I got to get a job thing. It was it was always uh, something business related that um, that I wanted to go into. I wanted to at that juncture in my life be like my dad, and you know, he was in the calendar. He, no, he was. Um, he just worked. We, I grew up in Chicago, and he worked downtown Chicago on Michigan Avenue, and oh, yeah. it was. I just wanted the business world, and so that's what I pursued for. Are um, you the oldest for undergraduate? I am, of course. oldest of three. <laughs> We yeah, all want to be like our dad. Yep. Successful. Yep. And, um, you know, so I followed that path. And I've been in finance for 25 years. Very successfully. And I still I still do that today. Um, work at Transamerica here in Cedar Rapids and love it. Um, but this is also my passion. And love, you know, my happy place is, is in the kitchen. And, um, you know, I love... The, the teaching aspect of it too. You know, when I do um, my group classes, I do private group classes and I do employer team building events. Um, and so that that aspect of showing you how to do it, sharing the experience, um, breaking down that barrier of intimidation maybe if that's if that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I'm still intimidated by people. <laughs> You're doing this great. Is not, this has not worked for me. <laughs> You know, but this this experience of, of making the meatballs or of sharing a meal is what brings people together, and so that's kind of my my goal is uh, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, when you cook or eat with somebody, you create a memory, you create a relationship, um, you reconnect, whether it's friends or family, and that's really like getting back to your roots because you think of when when we were younger people lived in the same cities right you you saw your grandparents yes. every week you had dinner with your family every True. week and people just don't do that anymore they live all over the country or their friends are are all over the country and people don't see each other and we've lost a lot of that connection and so to do this over food and try to reconnect people um, you know it's really amazing to see people's faces um, when they're hanging out with friends and family and or cooking, cooking anything so I know that um, many of our customers um, come in here because of the, the homemade food yeah we, yeah everything we make is from scratch yeah. and even though many of them cooked or had moms that cooked they don't do it anymore and it's so nice to yeah. come in and have a bowl of soup or a sandwich or a scramble yeah. that is filled with everything real there isn't yep. a single box of I'm anything gonna, here i'm gonna make the rest of these just into balls and let's get maybe just a little more flour i'll go get some we can get in a second um it does make a difference you know it tastes different oh. when you have it fresh and yes. your body your body knows you know if you yes. think about um if, when you're eating processed foods versus eating fresh foods yes. your body should feel different your body should feel a lot better um, more energetic more healthy more clarity when you're eating fresh stuff so many people will say well who makes your or how do you and they are surprised that we do it all from scratch i think that they're surprised because they think it's hard and surprised because it's so rare there are so many yeah. chain restaurants in this yeah. town i mean and i enjoy going to some sure, of them sure. but this stuff comes off the truck it goes in a freezer yeah. it goes in the fryer yeah. and it goes yeah. on the plate 
Um, and it tastes, it, it does taste good, but it is not, it really is not food as we... It's not nutrient-dense um, food, that's for sure. So, it's not. Okay, so we... we need more flour. We, but we made all these meatballs. We, <laughs> mine, are, mine are the big, ugly ones. <laughs> look, at, look at that! Fabulous! Awesome. Okay. So we are going to go to the next phase of this yep. beautiful soup Yes. Um, in just a few minutes. Okay, so we'll see in a few. Yeah. Welcome back. We are back in the kitchen at the West End Diner, and now we are behind in the workstation, and we're going to start the soup. So we have meatballs. A few more of our meatballs. We're going to put these in the pot. All at once? No, there's, there's a method to this. There is. And if you have um, the, the full batch, so this is like a six-quart stock, stock pot, um, you don't want to have multiple layers, but you can put like this batch. This is our last batch of the meatballs. You can put all those in as long as they're not crowded um, or you don't want them touching and you don't want them layered, but put, you put them all in. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we're just browning these for a little bit. We're not really cooking them fully because they will finish cooking once they go in the broth. So we're just browning them right now. We're gonna turn them a little bit and we'll show you inside the pot here. Let's see. My, uh, there they go. Yep. My range is a little, she's an old house. We spent 153 <laughs> years with some of the floor, they're a little crooked. Oh, that's awesome. And, yeah. That's okay. Here we go. Okay, cool. Okay. So those will start to cook. We're going to just turn those after about one or two minutes and just kind of get them browned on all sides and then we'll take them back out. Okay. So what kind of soups do you have um, on the menu right now? Uh, so my goal was for everything on our menu to be the best representation of things they already know. Okay. So chicken wild rice is okay. a soup that's fairly common. Chicken wild rice, best chicken wild rice you ever will have. Broccoli cheddar, best broccoli cheddar you ever have. And then I, because I'm not a meat eater, I uh, love a great tomato bisque, and our tomato bisque mm -hmm. is too dry on rice. So I did a circuit before I opened and tasted everybody's soup that I could find, so I knew what the bar was. Okay. Okay, and then we had a test kitchen with our cooks, okay. and kept refining and refining and refining until we got the recipes we liked. So those are our three standard, and then okay. we have seasonal soups, so once a month we try a rotation. Uh, chicken enchilada right now is a yeah. popular yeah. one. Yeah. Then we have a uh, four meat chili that we'll do in December and January. But tomorrow we're going to have another one. Yeah. I'm so excited. Are you going to eat it though? Well, yes. Will you eat it and not eat the meatballs? I will not eat the meatballs. I'm not eat the soup. I'm not. I'm going to turn that off. Yep. Timer here. Um, I, I'm not that kind of dish. I mean, okay. I, I'm the kind that's sociable. If you serve me lasagna, I'm not going to pick the meat out. If you make me a pizza, I'm not going to take okay. the pepperoni okay. off. But as a general rule, I don't eat a lot of meat in my diet. But I'm going to make an exception for my ugly little meatballs. <laughs> so they're just here. Let's see. They're here rolling around. around. And I'm just going to go ahead and Yeah. So they're rolling around and they're getting brown. Yeah, more for me. Yeah, you can do a few more minutes on those. So just a little bit of olive oil in the pan. We don't want to be frying them. Are we cooking them too hot? Maybe? They're browning nicely. No, I think they look beautiful. Well, these are good joints. They, they did it. They got together in the pan. They stuck together. They got them apart. There we go. Yeah. We'll just let them go for a couple more minutes. Okay. Maybe pull this closer. Closer. Over the, over yeah. the point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're trying to get the angle. Yeah, yeah. The angle of the pot. Okay. I'm compensating. Yeah. I forget to <laughs> Their 
commercial kitchen or their residential kitchen? Residential kitchen. Oh, and okay. Hey, Wade. Hi, Nat. How are you? Yes, very good. I can even turn the spoon over to you. Okay. We have right. a wonderful soup maker who is a Schwann man by day, except on Sundays that he's a, um, a minister. Oh, wow. Okay. In fact, both of my evening uh, cooks were ministers by clay. So again, here we have people who do something else and then find their way to the kitchen. Love Isn't it. That amazing. All roads lead to the kitchen. All roads. <laughs> okay, so we're going to turn these again, and they should be close to, yeah, I think we can, maybe, can you flip that, guys? Yeah. Maybe the square bottom. Yeah, maybe That's just one. <laughs> Maybe just one more minute, and then we're going to take these out. Okay. Um, but they have now started the to flavor the pan and start as the base for the soup. So we're going to okay. leave everything, you know, if there's little bits in there, we're leaving them in there. The olive oil that's in there, that's going to start our base. Uh, and, but we're going to take the meatballs out. So do we have um, yes, we do. another little bowl? We'll put, yep. put the meatballs in. Wait, take your, take your position. All right. How are you? I'm Kelly. Kelly, I'm Wade. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming tonight. Well, I'm glad to be here. A couple, glad to couple nice weeks. Oh, yeah, I'm here three nights a week. It just depends how much soup we need. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you're making soup in the evening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, 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 this is normal. That's what I do here. Yeah, this okay. is normal. Okay. I know you make the soup. I didn't know when. Okay. Yes, I come in in the evenings after okay. my first shot. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming tonight. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, oh. Okay, yeah. let's try to not get the olive oil. Okay. Scooping those out. So what he's scooping out is just a tiny batch of the, the remainder of the meatballs. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to just set those aside and let them rest. Okay. And... Wow. Okay, so we have Wayne back, Wade back in the kitchen. He is the soup maker. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. At the West End Diner. So he's going to take over the stock pot. We added our vegetables. We added our garlic. Simmered those, sauteed those a little bit in the in the big stock pot for a few minutes until those vegetables started to soften up a little bit. Added some garlic. Then we added some white wine, some dry white wine. And that is coming up to temperature. And we're stirring that in the pot. Then we're going to add our leafy vegetables. So you can use, um, I like to use kale or spinach. Um, those are probably really hearty. They stand up. I mean, I love, um, you know, other leaves, but they aren't um, as sturdy. Are there any leaves that uh, shouldn't be used taste-wise, like arugula, is that a little peppery, garlic, or? See, that's what I was thinking. I, that's one of my favorite lettuces, this arugula, but it tends to get really um, droopy when it's in a soup. Oh. So I like to eat that in a salad. I don't usually put that in my soup. I usually put a kale or a spinach in my soup. But so you can try it. We love the spinach. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. So okay. um, you can either leave it in whole or you can cut it up so that it is in a more bite-sized piece. Um, if you think of a spinach leaf, you've got the leaf and then you have the stem. So I like to include all of that, but I like to um, kind of break it up so that it gets onto one spoon. So it's a rough cut. Yeah. 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 So why don't we add the spinach? So we're going to add the spinach in batches uh, because you want it to start to absorb into the wine and not overflow your pot because you want to get some in there. You want to let it reduce and, and uh, get that moisture and then add more until you've got your full. I add about six huge handfuls okay. um, of the spinach or kale in there. So what size pot do you think we're using here? To me, that looks like a, maybe a six or a seven quart stock pot. Do you need something that big for making it at home? No, I I think mine at home is a five quart, okay. um, but it gets um, like that really close, like that top. close to the top okay. when you add all these vegetables and you've got the meatballs. We'll go back in. You've got, we haven't even added the stock yet, um, so it, it's a pretty big pot. It's it's several servings. Are you a uh, um, you know a kitchen appliance or a pot snob? Or do you just use whatever? Um, I use stainless steel. Stainless steel. Um, you know, back in 
when I got married 20 some odd years ago, the big thing was to have all this nonstick stuff. And I, I'm not going to say any brands, but the nonstick stuff in the bottom of the pans. And um, I have gotten rid of all of those personally because they start coming up and they, they start actually peeling up and then that ends up in your food. And that's right. just, I don't know, that's gross. So um, a good stainless steel pan is for your pans, your saucepans, your fry pans, your stock pots, like in, invest in good equipment and things don't stick. You know, if it's a good a good pan, um, it's healthier, it's going to last for decades. So one, one of my favorite things about running a diner is the discovery of Rapids food equipment here in town. You can buy um, wonderful commercial grade mm-hmm. equipment okay. and and vessels and cambros and knives right off the street. You don't even have to be a, a kitchen. It's right across from Walmart, but I love that store. Mm, okay. Yes, and I give gifts all the time from that store, and everybody's like, oh, I got commercial <laughs> bread. Nice. And they're cheaper. It's just amazing. I okay. highly recommend it. Yeah. Okay. And they last forever and ever. Okay. So. I would say my favorite appliance, though, on the whole planet um, is a Quiznar food processor. Yes. Um, if, if, and I, if you've watched any of my episodes before, you know I always talk about food processors, but yes. I make my pasta dough, my pizza dough, my pesto, my hummus, like everything goes into yes. that food processor, um, and I've had it since, yeah, I've had it over 20 years, and it's still, it looks archaic, but it works. It's a um, workhorse, it's, aren't they? They are. It's the workhorse of the kitchen. Yes, so, it is. Um, um, when you do your show at the library, yeah. uh, do they have all the equipment you need? Do you bring your own, or how does that work? Whoever um, thought to design this kitchen in the new library, so if you haven't been to the new library, um, it's downtown Marion. After the derecho, they built a new building, yes. and they designed this beautiful kitchen. It is a full kitchen, mm-hmm. um, you know, two ovens. And we've been, they had it pretty stocked with um, equipment before I even got there um, late last year. But, um, you know, each time that I'm there, I'm like, hey, we need a this or we need a that. And so we've slowly been stocking it with, um, all, you know, like the food processor, and, and, and for an example. Um, but it is phenomenal. So, yeah, so I do cooking classes there every month. Yes. And that has been so fun. If you have not uh, attended one of those, check it out. They're on, actually on the Marion Library event site, uh, website on their event link. Um, and you can register there. Uh, they're, just, they're so fun. Yes, I, th- I think it's phenomenal. We we share a street with the Marion yeah. Library, and it's one of my very favorite things in Marion. It's such a terrific addition. It's not really a library so much as... Again, a destination, a gathering mm-hmm. place. They have a, a sound studio, a kitchen. A oh, they have so, so much. much. They stuff. have all this, these maker spaces with 3D yeah. printers, and they've got a quilting arm, and, and they've got a jungle. They've got a huge jungle gym yeah. in, the, in the children's section. It is it is a destination. It's phenomenal. It's wonderful. Um, the kitchen is in this beautiful event space, so we can fit uh, 35 people in the, in the half space, and then 70 if you if they open up the dividers um and other people can rent that you know if you have like an hoe meeting or a birthday party you can just rent the event space without the kitchen um as a gathering space that um will hold that many people so it's really pretty awesome but sometimes people want you to come into their home and they have an event in their home and then do a cooking class yes yes so that yeah so that's the other thing i do is um group private group cooking classes so um i can do them virtually or in person where we're bringing people together over food so whether you haven't seen your friends or you haven't seen your family because people live out of town or or you're just busy um we do private cooking classes so it's we pick your menu and uh we cook together so it's a cooking experience and then you have your your dinner party so um those are really fun they're they're great to do in person and virtually i did one um, a couple weeks ago where there's uh, three sons, the, mom, the parents and three sons, they all four of them live in different states. Wow. And so we did a virtual one and all the grandkids are on the video and it's their own private dinner party, you know, for a couple hours where they can just chat and catch up and we're cooking and everyone's, you know, cooking together and it, it's, re- it's really touching and that's that's what I love to do is connect connect people that um, 
So do you have a list of Italian things that you recommend that you that you do together in these private cooking classes? I, yeah, no, I, I have a huge menu of appetizers and entrees and soups and salads and um, desserts and uh, cocktails or mocktails. <laughs> that awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, I have a full, a huge menu of uh, things for people to choose from. And it doesn't have to be Italian. If they want to make meatloaf, like, we can we can do really whatever whatever they want. So, uh, now that you do this, how does your family eat? Do you find that when they get home, then it's like, oh, well, let's order a pizza because I'm just, I can't do anymore, or... Do you still enjoy cooking for your family? No, the kitchen is my happy place. Mm -hmm. Anybody's um, kitchen. Yeah, anybody's kitchen. Your kitchen <laughs> included. I love this. This is so fun. Um, no, I mean, I don't do this every night at home, but, you know, for years and years and years, my family gets pretty pretty well fed. That's wonderful. <laughs> do we order a pizza once in a while? Of course we do. Um, but I love to do this, and, and my family loves to, loves to, to make yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, and actually, my my oldest uh, went off to college, uh -huh. and um, this year, last year he's a sophomore, and it's so cute. He is doing a pasta making party uh -huh. at his apartment for him and some of his friends. <laughs> so, like I taught him well. <laughs> so I'm German in Luxembourg. I'm not even quite sure where that country is, but this, that's my heritage. <laughs> and my mom um, makes noodles, okay? Uh -huh. And so I imagine they're pretty similar to... Probably. So it's eggs and flour and salt, and she rolls them out mm -hmm. on her counter and then chops them up. And that is a staple of the, until she passed of um, our Thanksgiving. So we would yeah. have bread, potatoes, noodles and various other starches to complement the turkey. Yeah. What is the difference, do you suppose, between those German noodles and the Italian noodles you make? So my pasta is just flour and egg. Oh. That's it. Yes. Um, which is called an egg noodle. Now, there's a yes. lot of other variations that have water or olive oil or salt, yes. or some, some people put sugar in them. My grandma just did egg and flour, so that's just what ours was. Um, did she use a pasta maker, or did she cut them by hand? She used to do it by hand, but then eventually she got the crank that, you know, hooks onto the side of the, yeah. the island or counter, and that, I love that. I mean, I do it by hand sometimes, but a lot of times I use that crank. Um, I make the dough, you know, I don't uh, buy the dough or put it in a machine. Like, I'm making it in the food processor, and then we're cranking it to make it really thin, but it gets it thinner than I can roll it, Yes. and um, then when you cut, if you're making, like, uh, spaghetti or fettuccine, yeah. it's more consistent. Right. Um, so I do love the crank. Yeah, I, I love the crank. Yeah. So how do you should we check back in? Yeah. It's, it's cooked way? down. I think the leafy veggies have cooked down, and yeah, it seems to be doing pretty well. It's all mixed together pretty awesome. well. Awesome. Okay, so we've got the wine in there and the spinach. Um, now what we need next is we pre-made um, the broth. So that's my ancient secret <laughs> on on this Italian wedding soup is I make the broth separate and it's going in to the stock pot now so um, over there we have the broth um, made already and we're going to add it in there so this isn't just pardon me um, yeah. broth this is parm broth this is parm broth and that is something i had never even cooked with so yeah. this was very exciting for me to yeah so that is that is the big um magical ingredient is to take parmesan rinds and make that kind of the base of the broth so let's check in back here and, uh, not cut at the top so we know Now it's coming out of our handy dandy soup bags because we made it ahead and right. properly yep. pulled it down and refrigerated yep. it because yep. as a commercial kitchen you have to follow very strict guidelines including sometimes dropping the <laughs> sterile <laughs> bag into the soup. That's okay. It's sterile. It is sterile. We use two, okay. so the outer one can actually sit on the counter, but the inner one is actually always sterile. Oh, okay. In case it actually touches. Okay. So we're going to give that a good stir, and then let's crank up the heat. 
I'll kind of bring. The, you can do it to a high now since we've got all that liquid in there, and uh, we'll bring that to a low boil. And as soon as it starts to boil, we're going to turn it way down the next super low, as low as you can get it. Okay. Uh, is it a rolling boil or just a bubble boil? Really, as soon as it as soon as it starts to bubble, we'll turn it down. We don't want it to sit there and bubble. We don't want it to boil. No, we're just bringing the temperature up because okay. then it's going to simmer for you know 20, 30 minutes and let all this come together. That's when, it, as long as the heat is up there, it'll do its magic. No, yes, the wetting of the the, the, yes. the ingredients. Yes, yes. 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 Um, so, is the soup made? I mean, is this, and then we just add the last steps for the meatballs? We add the meatballs back. We're going to add, um, I add cheese in ours. Um, so, we've got, we have some cheese right over there. Yep. So, we've, I use Pecorino Romano, yes. um, which we use the farm rinds. You could use Pecorino Romano rinds too. It's just usually easier to find. Um, the rind of a parmesan. So high bee actually yeah. has rinds yeah. already ready to be purchased. So yeah. that's where I got them. Oh awesome. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah and then we'll add uh, the, so your the cheese is grated, finely grated, not shredded because the shredded will melt in your pot. Okay. You want it uh, finely grated we'll add that in there after a little bit. Um, yeah and the meat will go back in there. And you're pretty much ready to taste. Yeah. So, so you know, you think of um, tasting to say, you know, does it need more salt? Does it need more acid? Does it need more heat? So, we did put some red pepper flakes in there, right? Did we? We have not put the red pepper flakes oh, okay. in yet. What Wait, do you want to put um, just a half a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes? Sure. Sure. Yep. And then the last thing that you do before you serve is you put in the pasta. Oh, yeah. Yes. So the pasta, so I don't put it in the pot. So oh, you just do the bowl? In the bowl. Ooh. And you can put it in, but then it'll get lost in there. So the reason that I do that, like I make your pasta and then strain it, set it aside. I don't like to put it in there because my mom doesn't do this. Um, and that's just, I think it's super smart because then the pasta doesn't sit in there and get all mushy. Yeah. So I make the pasta, we set it aside, then when you're ready to serve it, yeah. put some cooked pasta in your bowl. And the soup is so hot that it's going to warm those noodles right back up and then pour the soup into your soup. And then your soup will last a lot longer because the pasta is in there. It doesn't reach the yeah. starch that's yeah. 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 So that's that's a trick that um, we've done for years and it's just I don't know. Yeah, I, we've discovered when we make soups at the kitchen uh, here at the dining as well, you have to put in the pasta day of or even right before, otherwise yeah. it gets really fat. Yeah. 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 Same with rice. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 with the rice or even a potato. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, with the um, Zupa Toscana, I love that one too. But that's another soup? Yes, so that's um, Italian sausage, and uh, but it has potatoes in it. Oh, wow. Kale and... Uh, Lots of garlic. It's so delicious. Um, but same thing happens with potatoes. Yes. Like if you put them in there, usually I put them in there because I make a smaller quantity and it's gone. Uh, but if you intend on like saving the soup for tomorrow or the next day or even you know maybe several days in the fridge, right? At, at home, um, it's they don't get mushy. It needs to be separate. Do you have a favorite? I mean, you're an Italian cook, so you love everything, but you know, you can tell us a secret. Do you have a favorite Italian dish? Dish or soup? Dish. Ravioli. Because? Because um, that was always, two reasons, that was always Christmas dinner. We do like rack of lamb and then homemade uh, ravioli, which means making the pasta, making the insides of the rab, making the sauce, and you got to put it all together. So it's a big assembly line that was really um, kind of a rite of passage as a kid in an Italian family. Um, and it was always a holiday, so it was always um, a festive event. You know, and we're, we're loud, so like lots of people, lots of loud, lots of laughter, and the rabs are always meat and part of our cheese. Because I know sometimes you can get either in some restaurants, either meat or cheese. What's your favorite? Um, 
you know, the meat, because that's the tip. It's, it's, and there's other things in there that I won't reveal, but yes, the meat is my favorite with a red sauce. Um, but I also love doing um, like a, uh, a mushroom on the inside or a squash on the inside with, with, yes, with a sage butter sauce, brown butter. That is phenomenal too. Totally different than what our holiday wrap is, but very delicious. Do you still? Hey, Christmas time, we grab the only We do. We do. We, do. we still do it every year. Um, and my kids help. Yeah, I mean, we still have to get the assembly line going. Um, one Christmas, I don't know how many people were there, but we made almost a thousand reveals. <laughs> do they freeze? Did you freeze them? Oh, yeah, they freeze, but we ate them. That was for Christmas dinner because we, you eat probably, they're smaller. They're not like, you know, in a, a restaurant, sometimes you think of a plate where maybe you're getting like four or five yes. of them yes. and then that's it. Um, they're smaller, so you're probably getting like 10 um, per person and everybody gets seconds. <laughs> and if you have 30 people at Christmas dinner, um, that's a lot of, that's yeah. a lot of rest. So yes, we grease them, but um and then if there is any leftover, they're gone the next day. Uh, red sauce always marinara? Yes. Okay. But no With meat. With the rats. No meat in the red sauce. Oh, yes. There's meat in the red Oh, so it's like a spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Same yes. sauce for your raviolis, your spaghetti, and your lasagna? Yes. Um, sometimes I use a bolognese for my lasagna, which is a totally different sauce. Um, I mean, it's a meat sauce, a red meat sauce, but that's um, different ingredients. Um, yeah, for wraps, for pasta, um, a classic lasagna, yeah, I'll do my classic red sauce. Um, I do have a beautiful, you should, you should try this, it is so delicious. So, um, you know, you get flooded with uh, grape tomatoes and cherry tomatoes right. in the sauce. That's right, that's right. So, I put them on a, a big sheet pan. Like, yeah. Full is his feet. Olive oil, garlic powder, salt and pepper, roast them in the oven. And then I put them in the processor, the skins and all. And that's, and awesome. that's the base of a veggie oh sauce. And then I make gosh. a vegetable lasagna with that. And it is delicious. I love this idea because yeah. everybody has too many of those little tomatoes left. Because mm -hmm. you don't know what to do with them. You eat them. You're so excited. You eat 10 of them immediately. Yeah. And then they go in the salad. And then they're like, <laughs> when are they going to stop growing? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. But you can't yeah. use them yeah. just like you could a beefsteak or any other tool. Yeah. And the, the reason I use the little ones is because after they've baked and they've totally softened up and kind of grown, and you put them in the food processor, I leave all the skins on and I chop them. And you don't even know. You right. do not even know the skins are in there. Now, I don't do that for the marinara. Because um, you're using the San Rosanos for um, yeah. the marinara. Those, you got a decent. In can or fresh? Uh, I do both. It depends. Sometimes both at the same time. It kind of depends on the time of year and what I have access to. Um, I have planted San Rosanos in my garden this summer, so I had a ton of those. Um, so what makes them so special? I know that our pizza sauce required San Marzano, mm -hmm. but we used them from a can. Why is that different than a regular can of, of tomatoes? I think they're a little bit sweeter. Oh. They're less, I think they're less meaty. And so if you think of sometimes a beefsteak yes, tomato, it's yes. really like meaty and almost chewy and membrane-y. Yeah. I don't know. Um, San Marzano's are just more tender. small like that? Aroma, aroma, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I think. See, I think aromas sometimes are, are meaty too. Interesting. I don't know. I, the San Marzanos, like if I had to eat them side by side, um, raw, those are the most tender, a little sweeter, less um, meatier. I once I discovered them, I I like to use them in everything that I yeah yeah. You just They're pay awesome. a little bit more, but they really are so good. Right. But you can grow them. Grow them in your garden, sure. They grew just as well as the cherries and the grapes and the... How big is your garden? So I have two different gardens. I have one for my perennial herbs, the ones even in Iowa that um, come back every year. So I have um, tarragon, thyme, oregano, sage. And those, um, yeah, they have, they're starting to die now because it's freezing at night, um, but they'll come back in the spring. So that I have one garden where it's just those. And then my other garden, I have like the basil and the parsley and the tomatoes and the yes. things that don't come back every year that you have to replant. So wow. 
that's just how I separated my which brings my stuff full circle yeah. to the conversation yeah. about Italian cooking is all about what's in your garden go pick it fresh bring it in cook it up it's just so amazing and then it's delicious and you can taste the fresh ingredients you know when you especially talk about soup Try a can of soup and then come to the oh, Western Diner and have a fresh made bowl of soup and you'll fall off your chair. There yes. it's different. It just is different and it's you can't replicate it if it's not homemade. I do a lot of grocery shopping for the diner. I do it all myself. I don't have very much brought in on the truck. And each time in a grocery store and I see somebody with cans of soup or boxes of macaroni and cheese, it's everything. <laughs> For me to stop and not go over there and do a little soapbox lecture on why, why it's, it's not that hard to make it. Yeah. But you know what? That's a whole different episode of, of education where you think about this, the products that are in the stores that are inexpensive are the things that are not healthy. That's your fresh vegetables are more expensive than buying a cheap can of anything, of beans or of soup or processed foods that the less nutritional stuff is less expensive and I just not good I think it's addictive too I mean people oh, talk yeah. all the time about you know obesity in America and poverty in America but I think yeah. once you start on this processed food pretty soon you just your palate becomes adjusted to all that oh, yes. the salt and, and yes, the sugar and you think oh, you need it. yeah yes. yeah for sure and the kids that are raised on it, because, I mean, I'm a, a product of the 70s, and you went to work, and you, you did it all, and you had a family, and it's very tempting to do something, cut a corner, yeah. when yeah. it comes home, come home in time to cook. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that I also do try to do in a lot of my recipes or in my cooking classes um, is to give you tips, so that if you have a half hour on a Sunday afternoon, to pre-make some stuff, whether it's dicing up your garlic so that when you're even going to make a stir fry later that week, that portion is done. So making those quick tips and tricks um, are definitely something that I focus on because people, a lot of people are um, two working parents, you know, and they're coming home and or one a single parent, they're coming home from work, they don't have time or they don't want to spend two hours in the kitchen on a weeknight, right? So if you can make some some fresh tips that you can prepare ahead of time or uh, multi-purpose, right? You, you cook a chicken breast and you cook four of them and then you have multiple dinners out of them so that that portion of your prep is done. Um, you know, that makes a world of a difference on being able to do the fresh. Right. And that's one of the things that I pride myself on here at the diner is there isn't any, very rarely is there a single use item. Mm. We have no food waste because everything, even our our bread, our, our ciabatta bread that maybe is the end, we make croutons. All yeah, the croutons yeah, are made from yeah. absolutely everything. That's awesome. And the staff that I brought in were stunned. I mean, because they worked in places where they went out with grocery bags every night. Oh, of food. food. Yeah. yeah. And we don't. That's astounding. Mm -hmm. High five on that. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Oh, yes. I know. I asked you that um, several weeks ago. I'm like, what do you do with your food waste? And you're like, there is none. They have none. That's amazing. Yeah. But it, it took some thought ahead sure. of time yeah. when we picked the things we were going to make. Or how many things can we do with that? Yeah. 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 But it's planning. You do have to... Mm -hmm. Plan ahead a little bit, yep. and then it's doable. Okay, what, let's check what in. What do you think? It is come to a boil. Awesome. Okay. So I've turned it down, so it's on low, and okay. we're ready for the next step. Okay, so, so. we're going to add in that cheese there. Okay. Yep, so that's the grated Pecorino Romano. All right. Um, and I like to use the Pecorino Romano because it's from a sheep, or from oh. a goat, um, whereas Parmesan Reggiana is from a cow. And the difference is? The difference is... Um, the goat, like if goat cheese, you yeah, know, sure. might put on a sandwich. It's a little easier to digest. Ah. It's a little saltier. So the pecorino is a little saltier than the parmesan. Um, and, you know, for, for people out there that are shopping, um, there's a lot of things that are called parmesan yes. <laughs> that are not parmesan. So, I mean, that's a whole different episode, yes. too. You've got to read labels if you really want something that's... Um, authentic and 
not uh, filled with chemicals. Um, but so it worked yeah, but my grandma them? always used the rum, the pipe rum. So so when I you shared this secret recipe with me, yeah. uh, I saw that and I didn't even know about this. Yeah, Pepper Reno yes. Romano. Yes. And so I had to make a special point to go and drink it, and it's there, and it's delicious. And so if you taste it, it yeah. yeah, it's delicious. It's now delicious. I, I do get mine um, from Graziano's. Oh. Um, they grade it for me, um, so I don't have to do that. But I buy a five-pound bucket of pecorino. <laughs> and then you just keep it in your fridge, or do you? I know, wait, on five pounds. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, I put it in my sauce. I put it in the inside of the wrap. I put it in my soup. Even if I'm making um, my grandma's chicken noodle soup, there's pecorino in there. Uh, wow. mm-hmm. um, some, some, you know, I don't make my kids box macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I make pasta, olive oil, sometimes raw garlic, sometimes not, and pecorino. That's their That's homemade it? mac and cheese, and wow. they are licking their bowls. We have yeah. we use a white cheddar, on ours. yeah, which is delicious. Yeah. It's just a different, yeah, different uh, flavor profile. But the pecorino is just mm-hmm. and, and you know it goes in the pesto. I mean, it goes in like everything. So I go through it. Like yeah. We have so many other things to make. So when when we're done here, we'll have to talk sometime about making these other yeah. soups. Yeah. Uh, featuring them here. I'm very excited to try this. I'm very excited for our customers to be able to try this. Yeah. So, so exciting. Uh, when did we put the meatballs in? We can put the meatballs in now. Okay. Yep. Okay. As long as that temp came back up, we can put those in. All of them. Yeah. All so of we have a tray. Yeah, because this is we made oh. one batch oh. of the whole wow. soup recipe. Yep. Okay. Now they don't make fun of the little ones. <laughs> Those are mine. You made the little ones in that. Mine are all the ones that are misshapen. <laughs> <laughs> I I never even noticed that. <laughs> she did say now it takes practice. This was her kind way of saying you make ugly meatballs. In that. <laughs> they're gonna taste good. Though. I promise they're gonna taste good. Very, very very diplomatic, yes, very well. It's a beautiful color, just an astoundingly gorgeous color. It is, yes. So once these meatballs get in there, we're still not going to taste it yet because the meatballs are going to flavor the broth still. Okay. So we're going to let this go for 20 minutes, Okay. then we'll taste the broth. Okay. Now, do you want me to turn it back up again then, right? Nope. 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 It's going to simmer on low for 20. Okay. Now, because right. we're going to chill this tonight yep. and serve it tomorrow, yep. anything I should know? Just or use our usual process for doing this? Yeah, just okay. bring it back up to um, yep. a boil, but as soon as it starts to bubble, turn it back okay. down and just let it hang on low. It should hang on low for... So our at your lunch hour. Our rule of thumb is 165 degrees is where we serve it, which okay. is food safe. Okay. Same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. Mine's probably hotter, um, just because I don't take the of it. And okay. I it, if it's simmering I just let it go and it tends to get hotter, but um, but you don't want anyone burning their their mouths either. Which sometimes my family does. <laughs> <laughs> because it's too hot. <laughs> we're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah, you just blood I love how you're very delicately adding. There we go. Oh. All righty. So now go. you're stirring super gently. Oh, it's okay. gorgeous. So that you don't break apart the meatballs. Yep, that's why we pre-cooked them. Um, so that they will hold their shape. Stay together. Yeah, but you yep. want to be really gentle now with your stirring. They look very hardy. I mean, okay. they look like they were going to okay. stand up to them. Okay. Even the little I ones. Beat? Yes, even the little ones. That's yeah, good. it looks amazing. Look, look yeah, right. you can. You don't need to stir anymore, really. It'll oh. just it'll, it'll it'll hang out. Yep. Okay. And then um, we are ready to finish the Italian wedding soup at the West End Diner. Let's go back with Wade and Annette. And just like, there it is, we've got the pot. So we started with some noodles. And simmering beautifully. Oh, and look at the steam. We have about the broth. We have about four. Meatballs. Yes, yeah, maybe a little more broth in there, Wade. Okay. Yes. Oh, that looks perfect. Now, Kelly, you'll have to, oh my God, it's so that beautiful. That looks amazing. So yes. just hold right there. I've got to get a Look picture at of this. It's just unbelievable. I'm sorry, wait, you got that? 